Welcome back, everybody. Joining me now is a lifelong public servant from Hawaii who is the only immigrant currently serving in the U.S. Senate. Her new memoir, Heart of Fire, comes out tomorrow. Please welcome to A Late Show, Senator Maisie Hirono. Senator Hirono, thank you for being here. Aloha, Stephen. Alo Great to be with you. Alo Aloha <laughs> to you, too. Now, you've been serving the people of Hawaii for 40 years. Uh, state rep, lieutenant governor, congresswoman, senator. As I said, you're currently the only immigrant senator. I have a picture here. I believe this is you and your mom, circa 1955. You're seven when you moved to the U.S. from Japan. How has your immigration story affected how you do your job as a U.S. senator? couple of ways. First of all, if I did not have an unusual background as an immigrant with a single mother who busted her, as we say in Hawaii, okole, to mm. take care of us, I don't think that I would have thought about giving back to a state and country that gave me so much. The second thing is that my immigrant background really informs the understanding that I have for immigrants, their families, and what we struggle uh, to do and why this country calls to us as uh, truly <laughs> a place of hope. It's not just words to me. And it's, it's not just words to the people who still want to come here in large numbers. Yeah. What did you make of President Biden's decision to keep the Trump cap on the number of refugees who could come here and then the reversal on that a day later? I didn't support him going along with that cap because refugees are not like people who are seeking asylum. Refugees have already been vetted. And so I was more than disappointed. And uh, uh, he heard from a lot of us. And I'm glad that he changed his mind, which is what he said he was going to do when he was running for office. So we need a president who is going to keep his word. And that's what I believe Joe Biden wants to do. Um, now, after decades of public service, you've, you've written a new book called Heart of Fire. What does that title mean? It describes my mother because she had tremendous courage and risk-taking to totally change my life by bringing me to a country I never knew anything about or a state I knew nothing about to get away from an abusive marriage to my father, who I never got to know. And so she had a heart of fire in order to believe in herself and to do what she did. And, Tremendous courage. And you, you came here in 1955. Um, that was right before Hawaii uh, became the 50th yes. state. What, were mm -hmm. there ceremonies? What, was, what actually happened in Hawaii? The biggest ceremony I remember, I'm in sixth grade, was the one where we had a school assembly and I got selected to pin the 50th state star on our school flag. <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> Wow. And making a little, create, yeah, a little paper star and pinning it. I just wish somebody had a camera. For gosh sakes, somebody had a camera back in those days. Who do you, uh, What do you think about the chances of adding uh, another star to the flag? There's. It seems ridiculous that the people that D.C. is not a state and Puerto Rico. They're more populous than some of the states that are actually part of the union now. I agree with you. Definitely, D.C. should become a state. And Puerto Rico, I hope that the people of Puerto Rico have decided uh, that they want to become a state. I don't know that they have weighed in to that extent, but definitely the people of D.C. want to become a state. So talk about, uh, you know, no representation. D.C. people pay a lot of taxes already. Mm -hmm. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Senator Maisie Hirono.